I think it'll show up. Go ahead, Jacob, pull that screen down. I got something I want to show you here real quickly, and uh, then we're going to talk about a couple of things. Uh, uh, coming up here in a couple of days is the 17th anniversary of uh, the attack on the uh, World Trade uh, Towers there in New York. And uh, how many of you, let me just ask this question. I know it's a little uh, redundant for those that are under 17 years old, but how many of you remember uh, that day? Uh, I remember, how many of you remember where you were when you heard the news of it? And uh, how many of you, uh, if you were on this end of the country, uh, you were, you awoke to find it already underway and uh, because of the time, the difference and things like that. I was actually in Bible college at the time. I had went to my uh, first class and they had, uh, let me see. Yeah, they had uh, canceled, or they, the teacher, uh, something had happened, they couldn't, we didn't have our first class, so I, I left and went down the road and was spraying my car off, and I got back in the car, uh, back, back in the car, and they announced that, the, that they didn't understand at that time what had happened, uh, but the, a plane had flown into the World Trade Center, the very first tower, and, uh, and while I was in my car there, driving back to the college, getting ready for the second hour of classes, uh, the newscaster said, oh my, second plane. And then almost immediately he said, this has to be terrorism. I mean, it happened at that time, I think it was about 8, 19 or something like that, about that time of morning, something like, I don't remember exactly, uh, but I remember exactly where I was. And then I went back to the school, got ready to go in the second class, and, and when I did, they, I walked in and they said, classes have been canceled. Well, I didn't understand everything that was going on. I went back out and sat down in my car and listen to it for the next couple of hours, two or three hours. My daughter and son were actually, or actually just Sarah was in school, I think, at that time, and sat there in, in the car for two or three hours, and I realized I had went inside the church to uh, get something to drink, and uh, as I was listening to it, and they had been playing it ahead on the screen, playing it, the news reports and things there, and I, and I sat there the rest of the day and, until Sarah got out of school and watched it as they canceled the classes. So this evening, I just want us to look at a couple of pictures. We've chosen this time of year to honor our first responders, and we did it this time of year last year as well. Uh, this past week and this coming week, they will have uh, taken place in different ceremonies and things like that, so we normally do this the Saturday, I mean the Sunday after 9-11 to give them a chance to maybe be more attentive. Uh, so I just put just a few pictures here. I just had about, I think it's about six of them, that's right, maybe seven. Uh, seven pictures, I just wanted you just a reminder, if you wouldn't, Jake, if you would, Jacob, just go ahead and pull those up. How many of you remember, this is the, maybe you've seen some images, this is the first plane uh, they wasn't but just a couple of Im Im images caught of this one, uh, unlike the second one. Uh, you got to realize the iPhone hadn't even been invented when this happened. So nowadays, so many phone things would be carried around and people know. But this is the first image before anything ha had necessarily happened. Go ahead and pull up the next one. Maybe. And uh, so, okay, uh, there's the first tower that's been hit. There's a second plane on its way into, and many of you have seen these many, many times, but I, I'm probably, and I say this because maybe over the years we haven't, uh, at that time it was shown, I mean, nonstop repeatedly for weeks, right? And, uh, but maybe it, now, 17 years later, maybe we have kind of been removed and forgotten really what happened to our country on that day. Go ahead, Jacob. Now there's, a, now that's right after the second tower, had, or actually that's after the first tower had been hit there, I think, and, or maybe the second tower had been hit. It's the second tower, yeah, as the plane was flying into and exploding as it hit the second tower there. Okay, go ahead. And then there they, they were. That's a very famous image or the variation of those images where uh, as the smoke was billing from those burning towers, okay. And then there it is from a little bit farther with Lady Liberty standing off to the side. Uh, and, and we look at this. Go ahead, Jacob. And then here's the news. Our president was in a meeting, and, and they came and shared with him the news of what was taking place as our country was obviously under an attack, okay? And then there are some, one of the images, and many of you have seen those different things, but there are uh, lots and lots of images, and we, I didn't put together a lot of these. There were several I looked at, and I even thought of looking at several tributes and things, but so, but I didn't want to take a lot of time to do this, but I just wanted to kind of remind you uh, that our country was attacked. Uh, some people have over the years have questioned whether we should be there in the Middle East, and should we be at, at war, should we be at, but let me remind you, they, were, they, they attacked us on our soil. And I know not everyone in the Middle East and not every person uh, that calls himself a Muslim was involved or planning or would even plan or be part of something like this. But the reality of it is, I believe our president at that time was justified in taking our military there. Uh, I believe our, our military is justified for defending our country.
country at any time under any circumstances. Uh, you may say, well, I don't know if I agree that we should still be there. I don't know the answers to all those things. But I can say, I would much rather, if our country's going to be at battle, to be at battle on soil somewhere else than it would be American soil. I would much rather our country be defending our soil and us battling somewhere else than to have us have more of these images every day. If you watch the news very often, you see what's taking place. It's it, almost every day uh, in the Middle East and that part of the world there are images like these that we've just seen, maybe not on the same exact scale, but hundreds and thousands of lives are lost weekly. Uh, many of them innocent lives, many of them innocent lives. Uh, thank you, Jacob. And uh, so I just want to kind of give you some pictures as a kind of reminder that I don't want you to forget this coming week. Now, uh, today is the 9th, so here in a couple of days, uh, we'll be, we'll, we will be uh, the 17th anniversary uh, of the attacks there in, in New York and the Twin Towers. And I know since then uh, there have been uh, a lot of rebuilding done, a memorial and things like that. I know uh, some of you have been there before. Maybe how many, of you, how many of you had been in New York before the towers fell? Anybody been there and you've seen the towers? How many of you have been there since the towers fell and you've seen the memorial? Uh, I've never wasn't there prior, nor have I been there since. I would love to go there someday and see that memorial and see what's done there for a, a period of time. I don't know if they still do it all the time or just on the anniversary, but they have those two lights that shine up to represent those towers, and they've built a memorial there. Nearly 3,000 people were killed in an instant as those two planes flew into that, as well as into the Pentagon and then also the uh, the plane there that landed in the Pennsylvania field. Almost 3,000 people stepped into eternity in an instant. On that day, those people left for their job, left on a trip, left to go serve at the Pentagon, whatever the case may be. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of those, many of those, majority, probably none of those thought that would be their last day. None of us in our country expected that. Not our government had no, uh, no intel to see anything like that would be happening as far as attack on our country to that scale. Uh, granted, a lot of things have changed since as far as intelligence and things like that. But not only did, did that happen, uh, and nearly 3,000 people were killed in an instant or in a matter of moments, but since then, as of just a couple of months ago in June, there's been almost 2,000 people, first responders, 75,000 first responders, whether it be firefighters, uh, officers, paramedics, EM EMTs, whatever, nearly 75,000 people ran towards that while people were trying to get away from it. 75, Thousand people. Think about that. Other people responding. Uh, granted, New York's a very large, very large city, very, very populated. But nevertheless, 75,000 first responders ran towards uh, that. And many images you've seen as, as people are coming down the staircase of the Twin Towers. Those firefighters are going up, and they did not get out. I many of those people that going down did, but the firefighters did not. Uh, many of them that went in uh, died there. And I say to you today, because say this this evening, because I don't want us to forget what our country has gone through. Uh, some of you would have family members and whether it be parents or grandparents, whatever, that served there in World War II and they maybe have been, they may have even been there at Pearl Harbor when we were attacked there. And, and some of you have seen family members and, and, and had family members and friends that, that have served at, at, actually in the Middle East and, and they've gone there since 9-11 and they've, they've battled some of those things that we've gone through. And, and I say to you, we need to pray for our military. We need to pray for our country. But not only that, we need to pray for those that serve and protect our land here in this country, uh, on the soils of this land. We have, every spring, we have a, 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 a appreciation day and a meal, if you will, for our officers and law enforcement. And then we have one in the fall. Around, we do that around police week, the week after police week. It just happens that National Police Day falls on Mother's Day uh, as well, so we don't normally do a conflict there. We do it the following week. And then we do the first responders appreciation this time of year, the week following 9-11. I say this because since 9-11, in 17 years, some 2,000 people have died uh, due to cancer diseases that they got as a result of breathing the toxins and the fumes and the dust there 17 years ago as they were battling to protect and, and try to look and scour for survival. Some 2,000, we're expecting by the end of this year that number may top the number of people that died that day. In other words, those that were defending and protecting that day are still fighting this day. And yet they ran in selflessly. They ran in not even thinking about the future, not even thinking about uh, their families. Not even, no doubt they were false, but they, but they ran in laying all those things aside 
uh, I started to have some t-shirts made this week and I just, I've opted off of it because we got so many other things we're trying to do, but I started to have some t-shirts made this week uh, for our up and coming uh, first responders. We don't ever know how many will be here, but last year I think we had 18 different people that showed up for that and I'd like to have that many or more again this year, but, but nevertheless, regardless who shows up, our appreciation for all of them, for every one of them. And uh, I started to have some t-shirts made up this week and I was going to put something uh, to the to the effect on the back of them uh, of sacrifice of running towards danger when everyone else is running away from us. Uh, there's a very, uh, I, I don't even say, like I said, there's a very infamous uh, person that I wish wasn't famous that is getting a lot of coverage right now uh, because he's part of a commercial that says stand for something even if it costs you everything. The person that's making that statement, it costs him nothing. This person's never stood for this flag. This person wouldn't stand for this flag, refused to stand for this flag. This person's career, if they say it's cost them, was already over before they even started this movement, so to speak. They was not playing a sport. They would not be drafted by another team. They, they, their career was over. They sacrificed nothing. Let's make sure that we understand when we're going to stand for something, if we're going to say we're going to sacrifice, we're willing to do as those first responders did. We run towards the danger and stand up for those that can't stand on their own and fight for whatever the daycare uh, there at the bottom level of those, ten, of those 10 towers. And those responders went in trying to save and rescue those daycare, those kids, uh, because many of the people that worked in those towers, and, and here's the thing about it, God is so good. Even in days like that, this happened before the towers were filled with the hundreds and thousands of people that would have filled in just a couple of hours later that would have already been at work. Many of them were not at work yet. They were still in commute to get there. And, God, and even, even though as bad as it was, could you imagine how much worse it could have been? And then yet the one, those heroes there that died on that plane, that, that took control of that plane since the plane could not, uh, they've now de uh, determined that it looks like uh, that plane was headed for the White House. They said it all along, but now the evidence over the years, it looks like that, they've, that it's obvious that, that plane was headed, as one hit the, went to the Pentagon and did crash there in the back of the Pentagon, and then two of them into the tower. But then the one that there that died in, in, those that died in Pennsylvania Field, they, they, they are almost certain that plane was headed for the White House, the direction it was going. And yet those people on that plane, their own life, they put at stake. And it, they gave their own life to take control back so that that plane did not reach the destination. They gave their life in that Pennsylvania Field that day to protect other lives. So I say to you, we don't need to forget what our country's gone through. We don't need to forget those that defend and protect. Not only military, praise God for those, and those that serve, we need to protect, we need to realize what God's given us in protecting and serving in our own communities. We need to be appreciative of that. You know, there's often an expression about you don't know what you have till it's gone. And, and sometimes artists and painters and things like that, you know, they're, while they're alive, they make almost nothing. And yet when they're dead, their, their paintings are, are invaluable, so to speak. You know, they, people pay millions and millions of dollars sometimes for these paintings. And yet while the person's alive, they, they had almost no recognition, almost no... Uh, means or with the sale, I say to you, uh, those of our community that are first responders, whether it be EMTs or whether it be uh, firefighters, paramedics, whatever the case may be, uh, we, need to, we need to show our appreciation to them. Because the reality is simply this, what if we didn't have them? What if they weren't available? Uh, I'm, I'm so appreciative of those things, if you will. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3, I'll give you a moment to turn to get there. We're going to read a couple of verses tonight, and, and I just want to encourage us to remember uh, what God has done for us. It's easy often, it's very easy to get our eyes only upon the bad things. And, and I remember after 9-11, and after the attack on our country, I remember that, that after a few weeks of that, the news media was was becoming criticized and they were, they were torn between whether to continue to show the images or to stop showing the images because they were, they were concerned and they were fearful uh, that continuing to show those images was, was creating more depression and, and more harm and more hurt and more PTSD. And I don't know what the answer was. People much smarter than me were helping make those choices and those decisions. But the reality of it was simply this. We can get caught up in tragedy and we can get caught up in pain. We can ca get caught up in and horrific things sometimes that we forget to look for God. We, forget, we can forget to see how good He really is. That day was a, was a very tragic day for our country. 
More people died that day than died at Pearl Harbor. The most people ever died in a day from, on our soil from attack from a foreign country was 9-11. It was a tragic day for our country, no doubt about it. I wanted to show you just a few images to remind you. Many, many of those people that were there in those towers jumped, chose to plummet, and they, ch they chose to jump. And there's images of that everywhere, and they don't want to show you that, but they chose to, to jump because they knew their life, and they just didn't want to con have their life consumed by fire and die that way, so they chose to jump from the towers. And, it's, and the, the tragedy of that day was horrible. Uh, the attack on, our, on innocent people was horrible. But I say to you, uh, there was a period of time where our country uh, kind of seemed to turn back to the Lord. And I say that because it's what it, I'm afraid was. It was kind of a, a knee-jerk reaction and not a heart reaction. There was a time period right after 9-11 where, where schools didn't complain if there was prayer in the classroom. There was a time when, when businesses would stop and have prayer there and, and, and supervisors and their, and their workers would, would pray together. There was a time when Bible studies and churches were being filled. There was a time when, when people's hearts seemed to be broken. And, and there were so many verses and so many things that people tried to pull together and draw. And, and they, tried to, they tried to point that that was, you know, and they tried to get, take verses out of context and say, well, you know, listen, here's the thing about it. I wish that it was, it was a time that our country would have come to the Lord, not just come to their knees. We did come to our knees. But it wasn't long till the late night television was back on making jokes again. It wasn't long till, till the uh, programming was back to the same wickedness as before, if not worse. It wasn't long till the conspiracy theorists came out and started saying, oh, it wasn't an enemy attack. It was our government that blew up those buildings in the Pentagon. And Listen, if you've looked at very many images at all, you see the planes flying. Those are not crop. You see the hole in the side of the building with the shape of an airplane. You see the plane. You literally see the shape of that fallen plane on the Pentagon laying in the back of that Pentagon. You literally see the shape of the plane. There's it crashing that. Listen, it wasn't long till we wasn't, we wasn't on our knees and we wasn't looking for the Lord. We was trying to just live our life again. And that's kind of what went on forward. People said, we, just, we can't be defeated. And we don't want to be defeated. But we need to be, we need to be remembering of who the Lord is. In Lamentations chapter 3, beginning at verse 19, the Bible says, Remembering mine affliction. Do you see that? Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. We talked about this a number of weeks ago, about there's a time, the Bible says, there's a time for mourning. <laughs> there's a time where we need to realize that there's a time that when our heart is tender and our heart is soft, that we need to mourn because it helps us look to the Lord. We're living in a society that, that we don't want any remembrance of anything gone by. And I don't want to linger there. I don't want to get hung up there. But there's a reason that God puts these things, as I said a couple weeks ago, maybe it was this past Monday on Monday in School of the Bible, I remember when Keith Kaiser, Mr. Kaiser, spoke in chapel after a couple of college girls were killed in a car accident where a man running from the law had his lights turned off after dark and ran into two college girls and killed them from a Bible college there that I was attending at that time. And Mr. Kaiser spoke in chapel there after their death and, uh, and, and talked about in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord holy lifted up and his train filled the temple. When... when when our heart is hurting, when our heart is soft, it often helps us see the Lord differently than it does when our heart is busy and hard. We see the Lord differently. We see Him holy. We see Him filling the throne of heaven. We see His train filling the temple. We see His presence, His power, like maybe we wouldn't see it if we didn't turn to Him in time of mourning. I said that, or Mr. Kaiser said that day, he said, dates are, are resting places for memories. 9-11. No one can ever say September 11th without anyone that was alive at that time remembering what took place. How many of you were alive and you remember when JFK was assassinated? You remember where you were? It's a resting place for your memory, isn't it? You remember what was going on at that time? How many of you remember when Ronald Reagan, the attempt was made on his life and he was shot there? You remember where you were? I remember that. Remember where I was? How many remember when the space shuttle blew up? with a school teacher on board, and remember where you were? Remember when you found out? 
No one will ever speak of September 11th as they did before 2001 because it changed things. So we think here it says, Remembering my, my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I call to my mind, therefore have, have I hope. Notice this real quickly. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. I know that it was horrific what took place there that day in New York and there at the Pentagon and there in Pennsylvania. It was truly tragic and horrific. But honestly, as large as those buildings were and as many buildings as they were that were close proximity, those buildings fell and collapsed upon themselves. And nearly 3,000 people died that day. I am not minimizing that at all, but let me say to you, it could have been so much worse. It could have been so much worse. What if it wasn't just the four planes that they hijacked of our uh, commercial airlines, but what if, while we were distracted with that, there had been attack from enemy planes from another land bombarding and pelting our cities of our, across our country? How many of you remember after 9-11 that the airlines were grounded? Remember that? I had people, I had friends that were on trips that were well, preaching somewhere or whatever and they literally could not get home. People had to leave and go get them and drive across the country many times and go get them and get them home because there was no planes. I remember that was, that was probably one of the most eerie things that I ex experienced because where the college was, where I was in Bible college, was really close to Knoxville Airport there. And I had never remembered a time in my life that you didn't look up and see airplanes in the sky. And I remember literally standing there a few days later, I remember standing there and just thinking about that, looking up and just realizing there's not one contrail, there's not one plane. It was just, it changed things. There was a lot of changes took place since then. Our military, our intelligence has gotten uh, much more experience now. They've got a lot more ability to detect and understand. There's a lot more... Uh, a lot more respect, if you will, given it to, uh, to some of these things that we sometimes overlook. But he says in verse 23, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. Listen, the United States is still here. The United States is still alive. Our military is still intact. Our government is still intact. It's by His mercies we're not consumed. It's by His mercies that we've not been destroyed. Look at verse 23. They are very, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I, will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait, up, that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full of reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. I often say, and it's, I can't say it kind of half-hearted, but I, I say it to be because I believe it's probably true. In our election process of our country, I'm thankful for that, that we can be involved in that. But often, I think that it's one of two things happens in our elections. We either get what we deserve... <laughs> or we get what we want. In other words, there may be times the Lord allows things to happen because of our wickedness, because of our hard heart. But that doesn't mean He's unloving. Think about this real quickly for a moment. On the day that those planes flew into the Twin Towers and, and into the Pentagon and into the field there in Pennsylvania, on, on, on the day, in a matter of moments, on the day, in a matter of moments, the same people stepped in eternity that trusted Christ on the day of Pentecost. Think about that. In, in a matter of moments, nearly 3,000 people stepped into eternity. Some, no doubt, probably were saved. Some, no doubt, were not. Not another chance. No more hope for them to be saved. Now catch this real quickly. 
Does that mean that God there that day, because maybe the wickedness of our land and the attack and the wickedness of, of those people that planned those attacks that God was sending there in heaven going, well, I guess that's what you get. Does that mean that God was there nonchalantly overlooking and maybe even scourging our country? I, I say I don't believe that to be the case. I believe as every person steps into a godless eternity, I believe the very heart of God breaks because he so loved that he gave his only begotten son. So the attacks that took place that day, that day on our country and the lives that were lost and the souls that were cast into eternity for hell, uh, for, uh, were cast into hell for eternity and, and some no doubt were saved and, and they're and with the Lord to be absent with the body, be present with the Lord for the saved. But the point, point being, no doubt God was not glad that people died and went to hell. You say, well, what about those that fly in the planes? That, that, that God was not glad that they went to hell. He died on Calvary so that all could be saved. Let me say this real quickly. Why did they take those attacks in our country? Was it because they didn't like George Bush? They may not have liked George Bush, but I don't think that caused the attack. Was it because they, uh, they didn't like our freedoms? Maybe they didn't like our freedoms. Maybe they thought we should be a little more restricted, but I don't think that was what caused the attack. What caused the attack was they had believed a lie when it comes to the God of God and the King of kings and Lord of lords. They had been told a lie and believed the lie, and therefore they had a very purposeful attack upon our country, just as in, during World War II, those people were told, those Japanese pilots were often told, if your life, if you give your life defending your country, you get to go to heaven. They were told a lie. And therefore, out of ranks of that, they trained up these men, and they trained them to fly these planes that became known as kamikaze pilots, where they would literally fly them into, not above to bomb, but they would fly these planes, those explosives, into the battleships and into these targets. And their lives, they knew that their life was going to be gone as they steered their planes into it. They knew that, but they believed that was going to assure them a place in heaven. It wasn't. It won't. Jesus himself says, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And I say to you tonight, I'm not trying to be grim. I'm trying to make a point. Look, if you will, again at Lamentations chapter 3. Look at what verse 24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Notice what it says. It is good to a man that he should... He should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. The Bible says in verse 22, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Bible says in verse 29, He putteth His mouth in the dust. If so, would there be any maybe hope? He giveth His cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full of reproach, for the Lord will not cast off. Notice this next phrase, forever. The Lord will not cast off forever. We may go through some tar dark times. We may go through some tragedy. We may go through some heartaches. But I say to you, just like we find here in verse 19, remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath, hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Can I say to you tonight as we wrap this up, do you realize if you're still breathing, the Lord's mercies prevented you from suffering death thus far? You say, well, I, I, but I'm saved. And, and to be asked by the present Lord, you've already talked about that. I know. But let me ask a question. Are you enjoying your life now? I mean, I am. I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid to go to step into eternity because I know who holds my eternity. I'm not afraid to, to face judgment because I, I know the judgment I'm going to stand before and it's before the Lord at the beam of seat. I know that because of my faith in Christ, because His grace gives me the, the free gift of salvation. I know those things, but I say to you tonight, I'm kind of enjoying my life now too. I'm kind of glad that we can still fly a flag. And even though we may be divided sometimes in, in our spirit, I'm, I'm still glad that we're part of the United States of America. I'm still glad we have a military that is ranked powerful. I'm still glad that we have a process where we can freely elect those that rule over us. So, well, I, that personal ending ain't the one I voted for. That's not my decision. It's the Lord's. But I'm thankful He gives me the chance to have part in it. I think He gives me an opportunity to, to know that and to participate in that. Most of the world don't have those privileges. If you will, turn over to Psalm 27 when we'll finish this up. In Psalm 27, 
The Bible says, I'll just start reading. The Bible says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked man, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. <laughs> Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, and this will, in, in this will I be content, confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to hold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire at His temple. For in the time of trouble shall He shall hide me in His pavilion, and the secret of His tabernacle shall He hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in this tabernacle sacred sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me the way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, but for, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the hand of the living, in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Here's what it boils down to tonight. Even though we have the history of 9-11, the history of the different attacks on our country, Pearl Harbor, we have the different attacks on our country, no doubt, no doubt we have these attacks on our land. God's mercy endureth forever. It's new every morning, the Bible says. Every day we can look around and see God's mercies. And I say to you, in our country, we need to do that because we're one of the most blessed nations of the world. We have the freedoms that no one else has. Uh, Rick, if you wouldn't mind, turn that air condition up just a little bit. It seems like we've got some people getting a little chilled. Uh, but uh, as it cools off, it feels cooler, doesn't it? And uh, as the sun goes down. But the point being, as we live in our land, we need of all nations to recognize God's mercies. We, need to, we should see them more than any nation of the world. Uh, of course, North Korea has been in the news a lot in the last couple of years, and, and there's been a lot of people that's been critical of Donald Trump and his uh, talks with uh, uh, Kim Jong-un, and they've been uh, talking about, but let me say to you, I don't know what will become of this, but he's the first president that's ever even had those talks. Yesterday, I think it was, or maybe even today, North Korea had another one of their, you know, their show of force where they had their troops and out marching in the streets in their military. You know what they did not have in their parade for the first time ever? That's exactly right, those long-range missiles that, that they say they have that can reach our country. They did not have them in that parade today. You say, what do you, you like that, that leader there? I don't. I think he's overpowered and spoiled. But I say to you, God's mercy is endureth forever. And it might just be that God's mercy has shown up on our nation more than we even realize. It might just be that God says, I'm giving you another chance. So what are you going to do with it? Can I say to you today, let's look to the Lord. Even though we may look back and see tragic times, we may, we may have these moments where we say, well, what can happen and what's going to happen? We don't have, no, I don't know. But I say to you, even when I'm facing my enemies, the Bible says there in Psalm 27, he says, even when I'm facing my enemies and they're encamped around me and they seem to have the high places where they can have the advantage, he says, God lifts me up and puts me head above them. God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I say to you, I don't know what the promise to our country is, but I know what the promise to his children is. <laughs> he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And here's the amazing simplicity of that. I believe in this country we've got a great number of people that know Christ as our Savior. I believe in our country we probably have one of the highest percentages of people that know the Lord, or at least have had the opportunity to come to know the Lord, of any country of the world. If that be the case, then don't you think that we need to influence our country to fear the Lord and to look for His mercies and thank God for His mercies? This week, if the Lord tarries His coming and His will be done, or if He, if I say, if, if he allows us to do this, if it's His will, we're going to be honoring next Sunday our firefighters and first responders. When they come in, you're probably going to know some of them. You may even know all of them. They're people from our community. 
You may know them, and if you do, then, then congratulate them, thank them for coming, but at the same time, thank them for their service thank, to our country, to our community. Because people like them is the reason that we have appreciation. Even though they may not know the Lord, all they may not know the Lord, people like us should introduce them to the Lord. We should show our gratitude for their willingness to protect people like us and to help and defend people like us and help us when we need, when we have moments of trouble. Aren't you thankful for first responders? Now, catch us real quickly. We didn't show many of them for sake of time, but, but if you were to go home tonight or this week and you look on your internet and you look, it won't take you very long at all. And no doubt this week on Tuesday there'll be a ceremonies all over the place and all over the television and you can watch and you're going to see hundreds thousands of images pictures taken of first responders carrying people digging and, and trying to uh, find bodies or see if there's any uh, people they could save their life of in the days where there again in the days when the towers were on fire when the planes had already hit them and the towers were obviously uh, distressed they were climbing up the steps not going down the steps when everyone else was fleeing, they were up there. They were going to make sure that no one else was still trapped that they could get to. So I say to you, we need to thank God for His responding, His mercies, His mercies upon our life. I know there's tragedies that we face, but His mercies endure forever. Amen. And we need to find this, and we need to find it in our heart, and realize that even in times of trouble, we can still look to His hand. We can still look to His face. We can still trust Him for things ahead. Okay. In just a moment, we're going to have a business meeting, but I want to pray first and close our service.